Hey there, Elwood City. It's DJ Nikki here in the studio with the beautiful Miss Cassie from ElwoodCity.org here for your weekly news wrap-up on WXED 107.3 FM. Hey, Cassie. Hey, Nikki. How are you today? Uh, could be better, could be worse, I guess. So getting over this cold that I've had for like three weeks now. You're just in that midline right now, you're just saying? Yeah, that's exactly where I'm at. Plus, I'm tired. I, I was out late last night. Yeah, and it's early in the morning. We don't ever record this early in the morning. No, we usually record. It was a fluke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We usually record like midday, so this exactly. is definitely weird for us. Yeah. I, I came in this morning at like, I don't know, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, which I'm usually going to bed at that time. <laughs> and so it felt really weird. I literally, I, I sat there and I was like, man, I'm so nauseous. Like, what's going on? And I realized I'm allergic to mornings. <laughs> That's what happened. Whenever I we used to talk to people about, you know, doing a morning show or something, I was like, I could never do a morning show unless I went there as, you know, my tail end before I go to sleep. Right. If it was my tail end, I mean, I'm usually pretty, you know, wired at nighttime. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could probably handle that. But as far as trying to wake up in the morning, mm-mm. My brain doesn't wake up in the morning, not till like noon. Oh, I know. I'm the same way. It's horrible. Like, I get to work at 8, and I'm just like, oh, I just want to go back to sleep, you know? Well, my kids, they, they were pretty much morning people. You know, they'd get up at like 5, 5.30 in the morning. But I recently put them in homeschooling, and it's funny because we were watching uh, some of the kids walk into school today. And my daughter was like, oh, you know, I want to work ahead so I can get exempted from this class because I can't believe my class starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and then she caught herself and she's like well at least I'm not walking at 7 o'clock in the morning to go to school yeah exactly no I did cyber school for like a couple um, years of my high school career oh, yeah? and I loved it because you do have like the ability to like just work ahead yeah work ahead and get it done with I remember one semester like I got my work done like two months ahead of time and it was like I had that's amazing. An early summer, and it was it was awesome. I, I love cyber school. Yeah, my son, the first week he was in cyber school, I sent him out at, like, 11 o'clock in the morning to go to, like, the little store down the street. And the guy that owns the store was like, why aren't you in school? And he was all proud to be like, because I'm cyber schooled. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's kick off our weekly news wrap-up with uh, the top story from ElwoodCity.org. The top story this week definitely has to be the man that was rescued from the Conoquinescent Creek after uh, fleeing from police. Um, what happened was this man, a uh, very well-known name in Elwood, he got in a fight with an unidentified woman, and I say she's unidentified because when police got there, her face was so swollen from being beaten that they had no idea who she was. Oh my goodness. I didn't hear that part of it. Yeah, she was completely unrecognizable according to the police report. And obviously the the cops were called and they showed up and he, he was gone. And they saw someone running into the woods and lo and behold it was the man. And they lost track of him so they called the Elwood City Police Department for their for the dogs yeah for the canine and they ended up locating him in the Conoquinescent Creek he was in the creek yes he was January yep he was fleeing police officers I mean this was early in the morning too like around like frigidly cold yeah oh yeah and he was like right in the middle he couldn't like move like he couldn't go from one side to the other because he was just so cold at that point you know his body basically yeah, I don't just think people really grasp how serious hypothermia is it's like, very serious yeah once hypothermia starts to set in which is fairly quickly literally your organs start to shut down and your heart slows down uh-huh. and the blood is not flowing and the without enough blood flow the brain starts to shut down and you start to get delirious and like it, it it can happen quickly oh yeah well i think he was starting to get to that point because in the police report it says you know he couldn't like make it to back to safety or to the other side because he just so the police report says he was rescued from the conicanescent but actually he was arrested from the conicanescent because yes the report says that they took him after treatment, straight to uh, Beaver County Jail. Yes, they did. Um, and he is now facing several charges, obviously, for assault and all that. Now, I also heard 
that um, he was facing charges for fleeing police and for giving false identification. Yes, because whenever the cops, you know, pulled him out and asked who he was and all that, he, he gave them a different name. Oh, okay. And they figured out that they that figured was, out yeah. was. <laughs> so, he, yeah, he's facing several charges for that. Okay, so um, what other stories happened for us this week in Elwood? There was also another really interesting um, police report, and I think you're going to like this one just because I know that you are a gun owner. And I am. <laughs> you're going to find this interesting. There was a 13-year-old who is charged with making terroristic threats and burglary after he stole two guns with one of his friends and threatened to shoot like the the owner of the gun's wife with them but it didn't happen quite like that it it was a bit more complicated considering that what happened was that this teenager who stole the guns was harassing a boy on social media you know just like some kids do like teenage threats yeah and so his mother like the harassed teen his mother tried to contact the bully's parents and when she did uh the the teenager said in the background like i'm going to shoot you and she you know called the cops and there was you know a bit of an ongoing investigation with it but what the so woman you were saying that they were actually unaware that their weapons had even been stolen yes that is correct um and the only reason that they even like suggested it or even thought of it was because the bullied teenager uh suggested it to them that i don't know how i don't know if oh, okay so he, the kid that was being bullied yeah then said well they took your guns I don't know exactly how it was said, but right. I, I just know that it was suggested by him, and that prompted the husband to check his gun case, and he did confirm that two of his pistols were missing, and he reported that to police, and he said, I think, you know, the suspect is this 13-year-old boy, and so police went to the boy's house and asked his mother to check his room, and lo and behold, there were those two guns fully loaded. In his room? In his room, underneath his bed. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and apparently the teen and a friend of his broke into the the house and stole the guns out of like an actual gun case as well. And uh, I don't know. I thought That's that was crazy. That that was crazy. I mean, both teens are facing charges for the burglary, but the ones facing charges for terroristic threats, and also uh, the one that made the threats apparently practiced with the guns like took them out and shot them and wow so is that's that scary crazy? that's scary that is very scary like that makes me feel very unsafe i mean that was only in north silicly wow yeah that would that would be a scary situation i would not yeah i wouldn't want to be in there no because yeah, like me, either. me as a mother if somebody were you know bullying my kid i would have jumped on there and did the same thing you know what i mean i'd have jumped up to defend my kids and i can't imagine a, a 13 year old being so brazen to threaten somebody you know well i mean i don't know i don't even know who the family was we, we don't get that information mm -hmm. because they're juveniles but it makes me question the parenting like i understand that there's some children that you know that's just how they are and yeah, I mean, there definitely are some kids who are out of control no matter what you do. Yeah. And then there are other instances where situations seem to be blown out of proportion. Yeah. You know, like I've seen some decent kids be painted out as uh, some, you know, monstrosities when really they're not. It's just the situation seemed to lead that way. But yeah, of this course. seems like a, a pretty scary situation. Uh -huh. Definitely. I mean, if I was involved in it in any sense I would be very terrified you know like I don't think I would feel safe with a 13 year old having guns in general around me because they don't understand the I don't know the the outcome of right, what, what their I mean. actions uh, can yeah. be I, I know what you mean um, 
kids don't seem to grasp the finality of that kind of action. That it's not like in the movies where somebody can get shot six, seven, eight times and still be chasing after somebody. Like, you get shot once. Yeah, and you're down. And, and I mean, you have a very high statistics of death, you know. Um, just recently, only a week ago, a friend of mine was involved in an incident where it was a domestic dispute. My friend pulled a knife on his mother, and she called the police. When the police showed up, my friend refused to put down the knife, and one bullet later, my friend was dead. Oh my gosh. And it literally, it's, it's, that, it's that final. There is no option to be like, oh, that was a bad decision, I'm sorry. You know, and I, I, feel, I feel for his mother because, you know, one, she was terrified. She was being threatened. So she called the police, which she had the right to do. But now she has to wonder, well, if I wouldn't have called the police, my child wouldn't be dead. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's such a terrible, heart-wrenching situation. Definitely. And it's, it's, it is. It's that final. I remember talking to one of my kids a couple of years ago. Um, I want to say that one of our cats was passing away or something, and they were just like, oh, well, I mean, it's fine, you know. We'll see them, you know, like whenever they get better. And I'm like, um, no, they don't get better. I mean, when they die, they're they're gone forever. And the realization hit my kid, and the look in their face was just like, oh. I mean, it was as bad as... I can seeing, imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's as bad as... They were talking about um, how people needed therapy whenever... We were talking about the person who wrote the Christmas song, I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. It was that kind of dramatic, you know? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> it needs some therapy after that one. But uh, do we have any other news stories for this week? Um, yeah, I just kind of actually wanted to discuss something with you. Um, you know, with the council meeting was this week. Oh, this week. week, yeah. Yeah, it was the first of, you know, two. Uh, and there wasn't anything specifically notable to really talk about, but one thing that I do kind of always see as a pattern, at least lately, with the council meetings is that there's usually at least one or two visitors that comes up and and asks council, like, what's going on with all the tax increases and, you know, what they're doing to cut spending, and they're worried about, like, the bond that they passed for 2017. And then you always hear council side, you know, saying, like, well, we've put off, you know, making these changes that the the borough has needed for so long, and we have to do it now. Um, I mean, Connie said that basically the public works building and electric building are, you know, pretty much condemned at this point. They're they're so bad. Um, And they're kind of just like necessities at this point because they've been put off for so long. Uh, And I guess I just kind of wanted to get your opinion on, like, well, where do you stand with it? Well, my opinion is is this, and this has been, like, an issue that's been building and, and simmering for a while. Um, we started hearing about it, like, last year. And, again, I'm usually double-sided with my opinion because I'm the kind of person I like to look at things from both sides. Right. And I'm not one of those fanatical kind of opinionated people where I stick with one thing and then I go with it and I, you know, horse blinders to everything else. Mm -hmm. So I tend not to have a one-sided opinion. Um, My opinion is that you cannot continue to put a Band-Aid on a problem because in the long run it will cost you more money. It It may cost less money to rejuvenate an old structure now and that may seem like a better thing, but then if you think about the longer road and you think about, well, we're gonna spend X amount of dollars to rejuvenate and then X amount of dollars to maintain that, only to prolong it another 10 or 20 years when it has to be completely torn down, which is another expense, and then rebuilt entirely, which is another expense, and really, in the long run, you've only prolonged it. Mm -hmm. And so my opinion is, is that there are certain structures that have been in use for far too long and they need to just be put down, 
we need new structures, you know, new buildings and whatnot. Um, there are other there are other things in the working. I interviewed Brad Oviel. We talked about the revitalization plan for Elwood City. And a lot of people take the view that it's a vain option. But again, if you want to have something that has um, like a longevity in its in progress, you know, you you want progress that continues on because you can't just be self-centered and think about well, what's good for me, me, me. You have to think about what's good for the town when my kids are grown-ups, where right. my grandkids are going to be. Where, right. You know what I'm saying? Because. Elwood is a small community. We're the kind of community where it's not just parents and kids. Those people stay because they love the town. And then they become the grandparents of the kids and the great-grandparents of the kids. And your only option as a person, you know, who cares about your following generations, who cares about your town, your only option is to look in the long run. So certain items that are on the table for the revitalization project will make the town appealing to newer businesses and that it's it I think it'll make it enjoyable for the entire downtown experience. I know that Connie mentioned before they were trying to push for a zoning plan which would zone all the businesses into one area. So if you think about going to you know like Grove City Outlets mm-hmm. it's convenient because you park there and you literally just walk up and down these boardwalks to all these stores and it's it's so convenient. Right. That is what they're trying to do with the zoning. Um, I know that a lot of building owners aren't happy about it. But if you think about in the future, how convenient and nice it will be oh, yeah. to be able to park at one block and walk within just two blocks to all these different businesses and all these different shops. You know, so I agree with the zoning. I agree with the revitalization projects. I've heard some of the things they have on the table um, as far as lighting and, and stage lighting and stuff for the plaza. The plaza was a great addition to Elwood City. You know, the free concerts that they do in the summer, great addition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that the more that they tear down old, run-down buildings, and the more that they improve on the aesthetic of the city, the better businesses that we're going to get in here. And the better businesses mean higher revenue for the city, means possibly more jobs for local residents. I think it just makes it a better town in the long run. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I understand, like, you, both sides of the story, because no one wants to pay extra taxes. And I mean, especially with everything else, like, you know, for instance, I was in Ohio the other day, and I filled my tank up for 235. That's, you know, about 30 cents cheaper per gallon than it is over here. Yeah. Um, The way I look at it, and here's, I guess, how I keep my frustration level down. When my kids were born, I signed them up with Gerber Life Insurance, and it was nothing to put a dollar a week aside for my kids and all that. And then once they started into school, you know, we had talks of, well, how much money can we set aside for college and this and that. So as a parent, we have no problems looking to the future of our kids. Mm -hmm. So paying higher taxes to improve something for your kids' generation doesn't seem that much of a stretch from what we already do for our kids yeah that's a good point I mean I don't have kids so but I mean I don't feel that way as (laughs) such it's more like for me it's like oh this is annoying you know I have to pay even with the tax hike I think that we reported a couple of weeks ago that if you own uh, a home that's worth 60,000 your taxes are only going up $60 a year yeah it's not a lot but I, I understand that a lot of people with everything else added on top of it, you know, like I said, like even just gas prices going up 30 cents a gallon. I mean, Pennsylvania has the highest gas prices in all of the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. I know that uh, I was happy that we live on such a westerny part of Pennsylvania because I drive to Ohio to get gas. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, imagine if we lived, you know, in Altoona or something. Oh, yeah. Nobody's going to drive hours. Right. No. No, so it's some, nice that we live so close to the Ohio line because I do. I sometimes yeah. Sometimes I make like an excuse to go out there just to fill up my tank. You know. Yeah. Well, I have to work up there once a week. So if if I'm the one who's driving, I usually make sure that I fill up my tank before I leave Ohio. Yeah, that's how I am whenever I go up there. I just think it's crazy that 
we are taxed so high on gas. I mean, this is not really like it. Well, when, when people get really mad about the price of gas, I usually say this. Okay, I don't know if you were here then, but at one point, we were almost at $5 a gallon. Oh, yes, I do remember that. You do yeah. remember it. Okay. That's like right when I got my license, and oh. it cost me like $60 yeah. to fill up my tank. Yeah, my, mine cost me $145 to fill up my tank whenever it was, you know, four eighty five a gallon. But the thing is, is I, I would tell people, um, think about going out with the boys and grabbing a beer. You're paying $2.50 for 16 ounces of beer. Imagine how much beer would cost you per gallon. And then all of a sudden, gas didn't seem so expensive. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's uh, you know, it's the difference between paying for what you have to pay for and paying for what you want to pay for. You are so right about that. You are so right because it's the same with like, oh, I don't feel like cooking today. So instead, I'm just going to grab a $10 piece of, you know, whatever. I don't take know. Out. A, yeah. yeah, a burger Some or something. And it's like that feeds you for one meal maybe two and right i just had this discussion with my kids they wanted some you know uh pizza delivery or something and i said you know it cost me no less than 25 dollars to get enough pizza for everybody and i said that 25 dollars, i could buy enough food at a store to make three or four meals with and but even though that was my argument that day, there are other days when I don't feel like cooking, when I'm like, eh, let's just get pizza, you know? Yeah. I, so it's it's all the priority, you know? It's exactly. what you have to do based against what you want to do. Yep. So that's just the way it is. That's just the joys of life, isn't it? Just finding balance. All right. So um, is that about it for our weekly news? That is all, Nikki. All right, then. That's a wrap. That was the Elwood City Dot org weekly news wrap up here on WXED 107.3 FM.